And this is our continuing coverage of the 30th Southeast Asian Games. This time, Sepak Takraw action coming from the Subic Gymnasium. And this is in the Women's Hoops event. And this is the last team to go, Team Philippines. Coming in right now, Team Philippines. There will be five members on the floor at any given time for Team Philippines. There are six on the uh, screen right now, accompanied by their coaches. And we'll be learning more about the athletes of uh, Team Philippines as we continue. Here are the other competing teams as well. Singapore is also in the uh, mix. But right now, all eyes are on the home team, the Philippines. And the president of the uh, Asian Sepak Takrao Federation is in attendance to witness this event. And we are moments away from Team Philippines in the uh, hoop event of Sepak Takraw here in the 30th Southeast Asian Games. Now, the hoop event, they will not be going up against anybody head-to-head. -head. It's just the amount of goals scored within 30 minutes that will determine the winner of this event. And five players on the floor at any given time here for Team Philippines. There can be substitutes once the ball is dead. So for every attempt that doesn't make it, if the ball hits the floor, it's considered dead, but the clock continues to run. So once again, the event 30 minutes long, most number of goals scored will win the gold. And fresh faces here for uh, Team Philippines. In fact, there are a few members of this squad that have already participated in previous Sepak Takraw events. Desiree Autor is the veteran of the squad. Team manager, Juan Alonso, the four. 
And on your screen, the starting lineup for Team Philippines, Desiree Autor, the captain, along with Josefina Maat, Sarah Jean Calalo, uh, Jean Marie Sicalit, Marianne Lopez, and they do have a sixth member of the squad, Abigail Sinogbuhan, who is the alternate. So only five members will be allowed on the floor. And again, 30 minutes to get as many goals as possible as the officials are now being introduced for this attempt by Team Philippines. We have our official referee from Malaysia and the referee from Thailand, score controller from Indonesia, and two timekeepers both from Thailand. Court one action in the hoop event. So Sepak Takraw is actually a sport that the Philippines is still looking for an elusive gold medal in. And in court two, this is of course not head-to-head. -head. Indonesia is also going to be seeing action, but now all eyes will be on Team Philippines. Let's learn a little bit about this squad right here. They do have a few athletes who will be repeating in the uh, Southeast Asian Games. Uh, they've actually uh, won medals already. Uh, we're talking about number five, Jean Marie or Jean Marie Sukalit and uh, Mary Ann Lopez. They were both members of the women's regu team that won the bronze medal in Kuala Lumpur. And the veteran of the squad, of course, their team captain, number eight, Desiree Autor, out of Santa Maria Bulacan, was still was already a member of the national team way back in 2005 when the Philippines won the silver medal in the uh, hoops or in the hoop event as well. So 14 years later, Desiree Autor is back with the Philippine team. And one final prayer here for the ladies before we start the clock. Once again, Coach Rodriguez reminding everybody 30 minutes is uh, going to be put on the clock. Score as many goals as possible within that time. And as you can see, the balls that are going to be in play now made of synthetic plastic. Originally, that was actually made of rattan when the sport was played in the, uh, in the uh, Southeast Asian Peninsula since the 15th century. Now, a medal sport in international competition. This is the warm-ups right now. And you can see right above the uh, ladies is the hoop. And any time the ball enters the hoop, the hoop will be lowered so the uh, ball can be retrieved, unlike in basketball where the ball just goes through. So this is also going to be probably a workout for the person operating the hoop apparatus. Now there are certain fouls that uh, it still follows uh, normal sepak takraw rules. Of course, uh, hands cannot be used. Once again, we see the start list for uh, Team Philippines. Desiree Autor, the captain. You may use any part of your body, actually, to score goals in the uh, hoop event. As long as the arms are not used or the hands are not used, that will result in a penalty. So the knees, the head, even the back of the foot. And Sepak Takraw is actually uh, popular in the Philippines not really as this form of sport, but more for children growing up with a, uh, an apparatus that uh, usually has like a bottle cap and uh, some flights on it. And it's called Sipa in the Philippines. Of course, this uh, sport or this game is known by many variants across the region. And the most the dominant squad actually in the sport of Sepak Takraw is a squad from Thailand. Thailand actually won six gold medals in the 2017 edition of uh, Sepak Takrao. Of course, that includes the uh, different variants, including Shinlone, which is something that Myanmar is really good at, that being one of their national sports. So once again, we are moments away as the warm-ups continue from the Subic Gym 
and the Philippines. So one final huddle here for the Philippines before they begin their 30-minute trek into getting as many points as they can. Some fresh faces here, of course, uh, of course, uh, Josefina Maat, who is uh, also one of the younger members of the squad, along with uh, Sarah Jean Kalalo. And our alternate, Abigail Sinugbuhan, is now going to watch from the sidelines. And this is it. We begin. 30 minutes for the Philippines. As you can see, the first field, there you go. Still trying to get warm, but of course the clock will be running already. Each goal is worth 10 points, and that is the first goal for the Philippines. They have to hurry to retrieve the ball. Now, whoever scores is the one who puts it in play by either passing to a, to a teammate or kicking once again. So that's two goals scored already for the Philippines. Each goal is worth 10 points. Also, oh, this is an extended warm-up period. There it is. So the clock has begun in this one. Now, if the ball touches the ground, they will just have to reset. But it's better if you just keep the ball in play. So there it is. Officially, three goals already scored for the Philippines. Trying to find their rhythm. Usually, they do have a designated goal scorer. As you can see, uh, Desiree Autor telling everybody to settle down. It is a long time, but accuracy would be the key more than haste. And that's another goal scored by the Philippines, courtesy of Josefina Mat. So approaching a minute gone by. Another goal scored. And that is Josefina Mat again. So Maat seems to be the designated scorer. This is a very tiring um, event because think about it, 30 minutes. Nothing's really, there, there are no timeouts. You must continue to play within 30 minutes. There's another goal scored. So in the onset, <clears throat> excuse me, in the onset, there will be a designated goal scorer. And then when that goal scorer starts to get a little fatigued, move on to another teammate. That is one of the strategies here. And you can see there, the ball is out of play. They will just reset and start all over again. So right now, 60 points already on six goals for the Philippines. First attempt at a header. Of course, that is also a legal shot. Different shots here in Sepak Takrao as a, another goal is scored by the captain, Desiree Autor. You can use the header. You can use the inside kick, which is usually used for fielding the ball as Altor gets back-to-back -back goals. A shoulder thrust, which I have yet to see because that's a pretty high goal at nine feet as Desiree Altor is now officially on fire for Team Philippines. And using that one as well, the uh, blind soul kick or just the outside kick. Going back to another option here. Now it is Jean-Marie Sukalit trying to get involved in the scoring as well. That's a maximum of three touches per player. There's what you call the uh, flying clipper using the jumping leg as the kicking leg. And again, Desiree Autor has scored most of the goals so far for the Philippines already at the century mark. With just under 27 minutes to go in this 30 minute, only one period here. Good height, just a little short that time. 
And that's out of play once again. So they begin outside of the circle. That's a good strike once again. This time coming from Sarah Jean Calalo, one of the youngsters of the squad. That one just misses coming from the captain, Desiree Autor. So it's been a while since the Philippines has actually scored a goal here. A little over a minute since the last one. Now officially at 110. And of course, the ball does have weight. So the moment it hits... The moment it hits the uh, goal and doesn't go in, it sort of moves the goal around. Making it a little more difficult to hit a moving target. And this is suspended nine feet in the air. And finally, after about two minutes, another goal is scored by the Philippines, bringing them up to 120. Still a lot of time. That's another one coming from Sarah Jean Calalo. Now trying to get Jean Marie Sukalit involved. So Sukalit once again, she may have the hot foot right now. Going back to back. If you notice, when Sukalit scored, she was the one to retrieve the ball. And the ball must start outside the circle once it's out of play. Good accuracy shown by Desiree. Otor, once again, part of the silver medal uh, team of the Philippines. Trying to use a knee that time. Way back in 2005 in this same event, the Hoops event. So 14 years later, she is now the team captain. Now they're going to try out Josefina Maat with a header. That was good. So again, the clock does not stop, even if the ball is out of play. A lot of youngsters growing up in the Philippines do play SIPA, but mostly it's the men or the boys that get into it. Although the Philippines has had success in the combat style, as we call the regu, the regu style, which is akin to volleyball. But no gold medal so far for the Philippines in Sepak Takraw, at least in the Southeast Asian Games. Now the new variant, of course, of Sepak Takraw, was only, which was only introduced in 2013, now a medal event, Chinlone, requires keeping the ball alive as long as you can. That one is good. Coming from Jean Marie Sukalit. Left footed shot. Showing us a little flare. And again with the back foot. And that has been the accurate shot. Coming from Jean Marie Sukalit, a member of the 2000 team. Uh, 2017 women's regu squad that won the bronze medal in Malaysia for the Philippines and now trying to go for the inside foot and that's a good flying clipper scoring once again for Jean Marie Sukalit and the amount of training these young ladies go through not only for the Philippines but for other countries of course is a tremendous as well there's the official score the official time right now 240 for the Philippines as we come up on 21 minutes remaining and think about the amount of stamina needed here and the amount of concentration as well that's why there are five members of the squad that's a good header coming from Desiree Autor 
Just think about it, if there was only, only one person doing this for 30 minutes, that would be very tiring. And we have seen in the past, at least here at the uh, hoop event, some players do suffer from cramps. And that's why the alternate is present. And for Team Philippines, that is Abigail Sinogbuhan. So 270 right now. Pretty good pace being put on by the Filipinas. Egged on, of course, by the crowd here at the uh, Subic Bay Gymnasium. And reports have it that the Sepak Takraw venue in the uh, SEA Games has been hailed as one of the best venues for Sepak Takraw in the history of the Games. And it would be sweet for the Philippines to actually win gold medals both in the uh, men's and women's hoop event at the very least. To bring this uh, new venue to the forefront. So once again, traditionally, Thailand has been one of the uh, stronger teams. And Sepak Takraw. As mentioned earlier, Thailand actually had six gold medals and one silver out of 12 events in the 2017 games in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, as the Philippines is now up to 280 with a little over 19 minutes to go in their run. Thailand in the last uh, Southeast Asian Games emerged victorious in the women's doubles in Sepak Takraw, as well as the women's regu, which is the uh, same event where the Philippines finished third and attained the bronze medal. The men's quadrant team also won in 2017 for Thailand, along with the men's team doubles. The Philippines now surpassing the 300 mark. Thailand also won the uh, men's team regu. And in the uh, Chinlone side, the non-repetition primary was also taken uh, by the Thais. Philippines, of course, finished with two silvers and two bronze medals in the 2017 games. And they're trying to quicken the pace right now. It looks like everybody's pumped up, warmed up at 3.40 right now with less than 18 minutes to go. And that appears to be a goal. Our referee from Malaysia indicating it is so. Once again, out of play. So the last person to field it is the one who's going to be taking the shot. And that is good. Coming from Marianne Lopez. Also a member of that bronze medal team of the Philippines in the women's regu in 2017. Now in the 2015 uh, SEA Games in Singapore, the Philippines was actually shut out of the uh, medal rank or the uh, medals. Check that. The uh, Philippines actually won a silver and a bronze. The Philippines was shut out in the 2013 edition in Myanmar. So 370 right now, approaching 17 minutes remaining. And a lot of the uh, Filipinos are watching this for the first time. Many of them live here at Subic Bay. This is also the uh, home of uh, beach volleyball, which has been one of the more popular sports in the country, at least the indoor variant has. As Jean-Marie Sokalit is able to put in another goal at the verge of 400 right now. That was a knee used by Sukalit to hit 400. Now this is about the point where fatigue starts to set in for many of the uh, competitors here. As you can see, number four player right there, Josefina Mat, actually entered the circle, which takes her out of attacking. Just trying to grab that rebound in case it misses. The attack must be done from outside of the circle. And that ball's out of play once again. So the Philippines stuck at 400 right now.
Again, this hoop is suspended nine feet in the air. For the men, this hoop is suspended 15 feet in the air. Same amount of time given as well. So flying clipper is a miss. Now there are no style points here, it's just a matter of accuracy as well. For some it's the knee, like in the case of uh, Josefina Maat. For some it's that flying clipper where you use the jumping leg as the kicking leg as well, just like that. And now entering the halfway mark, Philippines now at 420. And if they keep this pace up, they could hit 840 which could be a guarantee for a gold medal at this point. That's a successful attempt through the yellow side for Marianne Lopez. No, not really three touches needed to attempt a score. So the dry spell at this point broken finally by that knee shot coming from Jean-Marie Sukalit. Sukalit has scored in uh, various ways here. Of course, using the back leg earlier. And if you, if you notice, of course, it's been a while as there's another goal scored by Josefina Maad that the captain, Desiree Autor, has gotten involved in the offense. It's also a strategy on who gets to attack at certain points of the match. 460 now for Team Philippines. Remember, the score to beat is 660, which was achieved earlier. By check that I said Singapore earlier. It's actually Indonesia. Thirteen minutes to go. Another dry spell here. Remember the Philippines hit 400 way before the 15-minute mark. They've only scored six goals since. Struggling to get another one here. Back leg shot, that one goes through. And the dry spell is over for the Philippines, but will it be enough to beat the 660? Try to rush right now. Again, the Philippines has not won a gold medal. And Sepak Takrao in the hoops event, of course, 2005. The women's team picked up a silver medal. And on that team was Desiree Autor, who is now the captain wearing jersey number eight. So many near misses as we hit the 12 minute mark. Philippines still hasn't gone into the 500 mark. So they're stuck at the 400s for a little over five minutes now. Still no score coming from that attempt from uh, Sarah Jean Calalo. Straight on attempt doesn't work for Desiree Autor. Still can't get to the 500 mark finally. They're one goal away from that. But now they're feeling the pressure. 660 is the score to beat. Finally getting to 500, the 11 minute mark. Now, is fatigue going to play a factor at this point for the Philippines? They still have a lot of time, though. 
but they know they're close. 15 goals away from the tie, 16 for the win. That one goes through. 520. Coming up on 10 minutes to go. Scoring pace really hasn't picked up yet. Just the pace of the movements, however, have. Again, that's three touches per player. That ball is out of play once again. They have to hurry. They have less than 10 minutes. Now at 5.30. Now the crowd's starting to feel that the ladies might need some support. The crowd here at the Subic Gym starting to get a little noisy. Really hasn't helped the Philippines yet. That's over a minute gone by without a goal. And here comes Desiree Otor once again, trying to settle everybody down. And that is a score coming from Marianne Lopez as we hit the nine minute mark. 540. 12 goals needed to tie it up. 13 for the win. They haven't even struck any part of the goal for almost a minute. That one almost went in. These shots are not working right now for Sarah Jean Calano. That one does, however. So 550, 12 from the lead. Eight minutes to go. Those legs must feel like they're iron bars at this point. Now Otor wants the ball. The captain has not participated offensively for quite a while, trying to conserve her energy for the final push. Josefina Mat scores once again for the Philippines. Less than eight minutes to go. 11 goals needed. So the strategy here as they just relax at this point because they are trying to rush it. Several dry spells already for Team Philippines and they're in the middle of one of them right now with less than seven minutes to go. That one goes through from Jean-Marie Sukalit. So 570, the score to beat once again, 660 by Indonesia. Another dry spell at this point for the Philippines. The last person to touch it has to put it back in play and make the attempt. This is Abigail Sinugbuhan now, who's in as a substitute. Another goal scored by the captain, Desiree Otor. Less than six minutes to go. They are so close. Back-to-back -back goals now coming from the skipper. 590. There it is, 600 in rapid succession for the Philippines.
Can they get it done? That knee finds the mark. Six away with so much time to go. The big question is, do they still have the energy to get the job done? That's another goal coming from Sarah Jean Canalo this time. Five away from the gold. Less than five minutes to go. Now the accuracy has escaped Team Philippines once again. On the first try, on the first kick, Quick attempt. In the middle of another dry spell, they are so close, but they can't even hit any part of the goal. That's a shoulder shot, the first time we've seen that from the Philippines. Knee shot goes through. 6.30, four away, and the crowd feels it. Here it goes again. With every goal now scored by the Philippines, puts them closer over the hump. Three needed, so much time to go. Less than four minutes now. That's another one. Trying to rush it, 6.50. Again, there is a lot of time remaining. But at this point, how much energy do they have left? Header doesn't go. Back leg attack doesn't go. Shoulder shot. Less than three minutes away. Suddenly, that goal has shrunk for the Philippines. All they need is two, and they can't seem to get it done. Indonesia had 660. Still nothing, and now the pressure is on. Almost. Crowd starting to feel that this one might be slipping away for the Philippines. They just need two for the win. Headshot or the header doesn't work. And again, those legs must feel really tired at this point for Team Philippines. And there's one from the back leg, tying them up with Indonesia. Less than two minutes to go. And that's not gonna help, that's gonna take the rhythm away. A minute and 35, one more goal needed. Settle down, says Desiree Otor. And again, the fatigue is real now for the Philippines as we approach the final 60 seconds in this one. Shoulder shot almost gets it done. One minute to go. All they need is one more goal. As you can see, the shoulder shot is being used because those legs are starting to get tired for the Philippines. 
40 seconds. They just need one. We have a tied score at this point. Crowd getting anxious. Less than 30 seconds to go. Now, if there is a tie at the end of 30 minutes, we're going to take a five-minute break and go into a five-minute extension period. And the Philippines does not want that to happen. Ten seconds to go. There it is. Philippines has taken the lead. 670. They just want to add one more goal for good measure. But that's it. The Philippines has taken the lead. 670. Now there are still competitors to go. But at this point, the Philippines is the number one squad. E eclipsing the uh, 670 or the uh, 660 scored by Indonesia. Will it hold? Still tabulating the other scores as well. Philippines looking up. Will this score be enough for their first gold medal in the women's hoop event? They're going to have to wait at the sidelines. And it appears that the score will hold for the Philippines. Team Philippines now is starting to celebrate the gold medal in the women's hoop event. In 2005, it evaded Team Philippines. They had to settle for the silver 14 years later on home soil once again. The Philippines gets it done. The combination of Team Captain Desiree Otor, who was part of the 2005 silver, silver medal team, along with Josefina Maat, Sarah Jean Calalo, Jean Marie Sukalit, Marianne Lopez, and Abigail Sinogbuan, they get it done. And Indonesia will have to settle for the silver medal. But what a great effort as well for the Indonesians. And it's taken 14 years for Desiree Otor to finally taste gold. And the hoop event. Of course, their head, Karen Caballero, joining the rest of the team along with Coach Rodriguez. Number one, that is right, Team Philippines taking the gold in the women's hoop event, Sepak Takraw, of the 30th Southeast Asian Games. So 670. Indonesia score 660. It doesn't get any closer than that as Team Philippines celebrates yet another gold medal. The day started out pretty well for Team Philippines getting back-to-back -back golds in the triathlon event. 
And there it is, confirmation number one, the Philippines taking the gold in the women's hoop event in Sepak Takraw. And it's been a great day so far for the Philippines, but of course the other countries are starting to catch up as well. Thailand, this is their event, and it's only day one of the competition. But for today, but for this moment, the women's team of the Philippines and the hoop event are the tops of the 30th Southeast Asian Games.